highlights channel of the Ranveer show. This is TRS Clips. I'd also love for you to talk about skincare a little bit from your own lens. Other than the basics of wash your face twice a day. If you worked out and you've, uh, you're sweating a lot, then wash your face. Um, there's a lot of new stuff that's come into the world of skincare recently. For example, retinol. For example, um, I don't know, some acid? What's the... Everything is an acid. Lyru retinol is also retinoic acid. Lyrulonic? Hyaluronic. Hyaluronic. <laughs> <laughs> I meant hyaluronic. Uh, but I, I hear these two yeah, yeah. words yeah. a lot. Yeah. Uh, my initial plan with you was to cover dermatology as a whole. Oh, and now I realize that we need a second yeah. episode to yeah. cover um, yeah. things like glutathione and yeah. all those. Yeah. Um, but from a very 2023 skincare perspective, and I'm not asking you for the basics here because... Even teenagers nowadays know that you're supposed to wash your face and yeah, yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah. Um, we just spoke about exfoliation and you know, you broke it down. Maybe the last question related to exfoliation is, mm. is it correct to say that mm. you exfoliate, you should yeah. exfoliate once yeah. a week? Mm, yeah, you can. You okay. can. Yeah. Okay. Now give us that advanced breakdown of all this retinol vagera. I'll tell you the problem in that is it is so vast. So I would say in general, for the actives, I understand during COVID, there were so many companies which floated. A lot of Indian companies also floated and international companies floated with actives and with advanced skin treatment and with ye lagao, wo lagao, all those things and 10 steps and one step and all that came out, right? Korean skincare, everything came out. So everybody started self-buying things. So I must tell or warn that skincare is not like fashion. It's not that you buy something off the net, you wear it, oh, this is not looking nice, okay, let me chuck it. When you apply it, like I said in this episode earlier, that I used a cream and it gave me an acne. One use of something can harm if it's not the right thing for you. So ingredients, you need to leave it to a doctor. I'm on the, on the scientific panel for a lot of corporates, like Unilevers and PNGs and stuff like that. I work on a scientific basis with them. So they were giving me the market intelligence, which said that the highest searched ingredients today is like you said, hyaluronic acid, vitamin C and retinol. So three are the highest searched things. And imagine everybody is using vitamin C. But vitamin C can be very harmful if your skin is dry, if your skin is chappy, or if it is, like I keep saying, eczema, if I bring it like an eczematous skin, or a xerotic, excessively dry skin, a sensitive skin, a, a sunburnt skin, a skin which is ready to go for holiday, which means there is an impeding sunburn. Any of those situations of vitamin C can be detrimental to your Why? skin. One, it is an acid. It will sensitize your skin. It will burn your skin. It will be more sensitive to you. So as much as you think, oh, it's an antioxidant. It will protect me. It will do this. It will make me light, lighter, brighter, fairer, whatever you want to. Not for everyone. Not for every skin type. Not for every situation. Fair to say it's like a junior peel? Yeah. Fair to say that. Okay. Fair to say that. So likewise, I'm saying something as common and as harmless as you're thinking vitamin C can do so much. And hyaluronic acid that you say has become everyone's god. Everybody's saying hyaluronic acid. I'll also put, I'll also put, I'll also put. Oh, it's hydrant. It's plump your skin. Hyaluronic acid is just, let's say, how can I put it? It's a concentrated water. Tightly bound concentrated water. Loosely, that is what a hyaluronic acid can be like. So it will give you a lot of hydration to the skin. A hydrated but, look? Hydrated look, hydration, but it is an acid at the end of the day, right? So if you still put that on a very dry skin, it won't hydrate you. It will irritate you further. So that has to be also put on a skin where the barrier is intact. And just water is not enough. Skin needs to repair or protect or take care of itself. Three important things, water, oil, and protein, which you call as peptides, correct? So water, oil, and protein. So you can't put one or the other. You can't put one and expect magic. There has to be a combination of certain thing. And it is not easy to say, let's talk about ingredients and let's tell one thing. There is no one ingredient which will match everyone. So all I'm trying to tell you is, if you want me to now give you more skincare than wash your face twice a day, protect, nourish, Cleanse. Let's say start with this three as your mantra. Okay. Cleanse, of course, you know what to do. 
Now, cleanse can be very, very complicated, actually. I just did one long video on cleanse for my own audience. Because you think just buy a face wash and wash it. No. Or you think there's a three-step rate, rate. No. Firstly, choosing the cleanser correct, cleanser can make or break your skin. So if you are a dry skin person and if you end up using a brightening face wash, for example, which may have acids in it, can harm your skin, make it further dry, irritated. Eventually, that irritation leads to pigmentation. So you're trying to do brightening and lightening, you'll end up getting pigmentation. So therefore, choosing the face wash is very important. And acne-prone skin sometimes, they end up going and looking at salicylic acid 2% or something, something acid that many percent. I know you have acne, I know you have oily skin, but you don't want to be driving it to extreme dryness. Body works on a feedback mechanism. Then your oil gland will say, Ari, there's no oil and it'll produce even more. Yeah. So face wash becomes very, very important. So cleanse is your first step. It's not just about washing face twice a day. Use a correct cleanser. If you are someone who's out in the pollution dust a lot, you may need a pre-cleanse, which is oil-soluble dust has to be also removed. So you may need something like an oil to remove it off. If there's a lot of makeup, you may need micellar water to remove it off. Or post the wash itself, you may want to wash your face first of the dust and grime. And like you said, once in a week, use a little exfoliator to remove the top dead skin. So these all comes under cleansing. How do you remove your makeup correctly? You remove the pigment makeup first. Don't rub everything like this with an oil. Remove the pigment makeup, then use a separate cotton to remove the rest of it. So methods of cleansing, what you use for cleansing, what are the steps of cleansing, what skin type can be a discussion on its own. So yes, first thing is cleansing. Second thing, simply protect your skin. It could be from free radical damage, from pollution, from sun, from wind, from anything. Do you think sunscreen should be used by yeah, everyone? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So these days, formulations of sunscreen is amazing. It just doesn't protect you from the UV rays protects you from the visible light, protects you from infrared rays, which can be inflammatory, make your skin red and irritated. So it really works well. So sunscreen is a must in everybody's regime in the time when the sun is up in the sky. What if you don't use sunscreen? What if you don't use a sunscreen? Nothing will happen. Uh, you may be more prone to pigmentation. You may be more prone to a slightly faster deterioration of your elastin and your collagen. Your aging will be faster. A little faster. You may get a little dehydrated, a little inflamed, more than the person who is nicely using a sunscreen regularly. A little inflamed means if you have a little acne on your face, it'll grow in size. It could become little more red and more aggressive. Okay. Um, simply your skin might become red and irritated because infrared will heat up the skin. So that can end up making it red and irritated. So those things eventually leading to pigmentation, acne, whatever, whatever, any aggression. So yeah, protection means protecting from all of this, which could be moisturizer is itself a protection, right? Against the dust and the particles. So that's protection. Uh, then nourishing. Nourishing is, if your skin is dry, a good moisturizer is nourishing. If your skin is uh, very dehydrated, something very nice and, you know, like a little mist on the skin could be nourishing. So nourish your skin to what it requires to quench it, to calm it. Fourth step, which is optional, is correction and enhancement. That is where you can bring in your this serum, that serum, that tube, this acid, that all that can come there. Nourishment can also come from some good ingredients. Like food? No, I'm still talking of from the top. Oh, okay. We are talking only skincare okay, regime okay. from the top. Like so I said three step, right? So cleansing, protection and nourishment. Okay. So nourishing the skin can come from any of these good ingredients, like a licorice, very nourishing to the skin. Calendula, calming and nourishing to the skin. Aloe vera. Um, I'm not a great fan of aloe vera, to yeah. be honest. I was talking to a botanist long time back when aloe vera was right. Then everybody started growing one aloe vera in the kitchen pot. That is when I was like, how is this even possible? And me and my daughter were allergic to aloe vera, even from the plant. So I was like, oh, how did this happen? I'm not a botanist, so I don't understand that that well. So in some conference, I met a botanist and I was talking. So he was telling me, I may be wrong with the numbers that I'm, I'm telling you now. He said there's some 400 species of aloe vera or 700, something he said, out of which only four have medicinal value for skin. And he says, once you extract it, within four minutes, those values die. So what are we doing? I don't know. So like that. So everything natural may not be necessarily good. Yes. So okay. that is the long and short of skincare okay. regime. Okay. I think nowadays the chatter about skincare regimes is mainly about the sunscreen angle which I asked you because mm. I see a lot of Indians on the fence about it mm. for multiple reasons. Mm. There are a lot of old school thinkers 
who think that I mean, this is what Ayurveda says that the sun is very good for your skin. It is good. It is good. It's yeah. still. I'm also saying even Western medicine will tell you yeah. sun is good for the skin. Yeah. You need the vitamin D that it gets. You need. It stimulates happy hormones. Yeah. So sun is very good in multiple levels for you, but that is that early morning sun which is nice. Or evening. The old or the late evening, the dawn or the dusk. The older people like my mother never wore a sunscreen. She does have a pigmentation. It's a different question, but. That's a familial pigmentation that runs in the family called melasma. She also has it. Some of her sisters have it. That is different. She would get it even if you wore a sunscreen, for example. But I'm saying they never ended up wearing a sunscreen. Their skin was fine. We end up wearing a sunscreen. So I can always argue and say, but my mom never. Some people's moms have great skin. They can say, but my mom never wore it. But that day's food, the nourishment you got from the food, the pollution, the hole in the ozone was all different than what it is today. So it's much more harsher. My mom never used an AHA BHA cleanser. You end up using that and walk into the sun, you're going to burn your skin. So contextually, it is very different today. Let us forget the ozone and the pollution. The number of things we are abusing the skin is not how my mom did it, right? At the most, what did they put? Banana on the skin, mm. honey on the skin. Like you said, maybe aloe vera on the skin was advanced. So that is it. We are putting God knows how many things on our skin right now. Teenagers, so I, 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 I have a habit of saying, carry all your sun, all your skincare when you come to me for the first consultation. I am shocked at the bag they bring in. <laughs> and some people have genuinely have 10 step regime. I'm like, do you really have the time? So, yeah, so we are abusing the skin. So you need extra protection. Then you can't say I will abuse and I will not protect. How will that work? Okay. Have you seen a modern day human with good skin, but who doesn't use sunscreen? Do you use sunscreen? No. Your skin is good. You're a modern day human. And I don't use it because I'm kind of lazy. That's all. There are many people like that. Like I'm saying, it's still okay. It's still okay. Like I said, are you then using an EHA and getting out in the sun? You're not. You're lazy, so you're not doing anything. So that is still okay. You can't disrupt and say, I will not protect. I mean, over the years, I figured the skincare that works for me. You're a Punjabi long. with good skin. Come on. I don't think I'm genetically uh, blessed with good skin. That is because you're talking of acne. Let's yeah. forget acne. Acne is one part of it. No, look at your skin on your hands, your fingers, they're fed. It's like a baby skin. That's Fantastic. the gauge? Yeah. Really? This is, you have beautiful skin. How, how do you quantify that? One, your skin is not too thin. Like for example, my skin you're saying is beautiful when we started. I know it is a beautiful skin. I've got my dad's skin. But I can already see all my arteries and veins here, which is such a thin skin. I won't age well, no matter what I do. Because there's such a thin skin. But you, firstly, as a man, have a thicker skin. But even otherwise, your skin is nice and thick. I can see it's very even-toned. Look at your knuckles. Look at your hands. They're nice and even-toned. They, they have a luminosity in it. So I know you're not putting junk into your gut. So skin wow, you can is, tell that much? Yeah, your skin is very well hydrated. Look at the little shine on your nose. Look at the little shine on your chin, your fingers. You're, I usually, first thing, better than the face, I always look at their hands and their feet. Because that is something which is most exposed. So I can see it at its worst. You have not put a cream and come. I don't know what you have put and come to me, right? So when I check, I'm always, I, I have a table where they're sitting there. Obviously, bottom is just legs, so I can see their legs down. I see their feet, feet their elbow, their hands, everything as it, and neck. These two, three things for me are very important to see. So, then I come to the hand scalp. Then I come to the face. So the face is obvious. But all of these contribute to, I know your hygiene, then your skin, then your whatever you know, issues then. I know many things from just checking these many things. Wow. Okay. I never knew the hands and the feet are an indicator. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, in the same way that, you know, a lot of my female friends told me that the first thing they notice about a guy is the hands. Oh, really? It was such a shock for me. <laughs> like, why? <laughs> so these are playlists made especially for you. We've tailor-made learning experiences for you. The TRS Clips.